breaking right now on the four. Several people are okay after this happened. A sinkhole opened up underneath their SUV in Jefferson County. We have a live report in just a moment. Plus new revelations about that former University of Alabama student charged with several sex crimes in court today. Now we're on your side and what we're learning about the case. And the Secret Service still in the hot seat following the assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump. What I saw made me ashamed. I cannot defend why that roof was not better secured. New on the floor, hear what the new acting director of the Secret Service told members of the Senate. Plus city leaders in Alabaster say they need more hotels. Your Shelby County reporter Andre Robinson is standing by with a live report to explain why. Live and on your side. WBRC Fox 6 News starts with first alert weather. And the big story for us today and the rest of the week is the heat and the humidity that we have been dealing with. It's been really hot today, 93 degrees right now, but it's going to be even hotter tomorrow and Thursday, which is why our first alert weather team has declared those days first alert weather days. First alert meteorologist Nia Michelle standing by now with your weather every six. Nia, how hot will it feel out there is the question. Yeah, and listen, it's going to easily feel like the triple digits. So yes, temperatures may only be in the 90s throughout your day tomorrow and Thursday, but those feel like temperatures reaching far above 100 degrees. And that's why not only is it first alert weather day, but we're also under a heat advisory and notice all of central Alabama is going to be included in this heat advisory through tomorrow around 9 PM. You definitely want to make sure you stay hydrated and avoid any outdoor strenuous activities. As of right now, most areas are dry. We're dry here in Jefferson County, but there are a few isolated showers across the area. One of them just south of Ashland and Clay County over towards Bluff Springs and Bishop Road, giving you a first alert for some heavy rainfall near Mellow Valley. Some moderate downpours for you, but the good news is the rain is only going to help to cool you off right now. But a first alert for dangerous heat in the forecast as we bring in the middle of your week, easily feeling like 105, 106 and 107 across many counties. So please stay hydrated over the next several days. Here's what I'm tracking. Number one, we've got that heat advisory in effect. Number two, we're looking at lower rain chances, but lower rain chances means hotter conditions. I'll let you know how this rest of your evening looks, plus how hot it's going to feel to you the rest of this week in weather every six. Breaking right now on the floor, no one is hurt after a sinkhole swallowed a car in Fairfield. Well, your student journalist Emma Ellis is live at the scene right now. Emma, what can you tell us about what happened here? Well, we're live on the scene on 43rd Street where a driver accidentally drove an SUV into a sinkhole in Fairfield, and we're going to try to get a look at that sinkhole here. Now, wrecker crews pulled that car out about eight minutes ago. Now, this is an alley right off of 43rd Street, and the driver told us the hole wasn't there when they started down the alleyway, but the ground opened up under them once they were on top of it. One of the passengers describes the feeling as going down a hill on a roller coaster, and the wrecker company tells us the road was washed out underneath the paving and couldn't withstand the weight of the car. Now this is a deep hole, but all of the passengers appear to be okay. Now I've reached out to city leaders about how they intend to resolve this issue. And we're still waiting on a response. Live in Fairfield, Fairfield, Emma Ellis, WBRC Fox 6 News on your side. And we have a breaking news update on that former University of Alabama student accused of several sex crimes in Tuscaloosa that suspect in a court today for a preliminary and an Anaya's Law hearing. Now this case is disturbing. Police arrested 23 year old Gab Gambrel Gentry. After another student suspected she was sexually assaulted, she said she woke up one morning with no memory of the night before. And Tuscaloosa police say they found photos and videos of the woman being sexually assaulted while she was unconscious. Gentry is facing charges of rape, sodomy, and voyeurism. Gentry has also been banned from the University of Alabama campus. Police are now asking other possible victims to come forward in this case. Breaking news on the four two daycare workers charged in Talladega County after they were caught on video slapping and whipping children with a belt are pleading not guilty. Jasmine Ragland pleading not guilty today to two counts of assault third degree and Shirley Curry pleading not guilty to one count of harassment. Talladega police identified Ragland as the worker in this video 
hitting a three-year-old boy with a belt multiple times. His mother told me he is scarred by what happened and flinches every time he sees a belt now. This all happened at Precious Vessels Learning Center. DHR is investigating and placed the center on probation. We reached out to the two workers and the daycare but they all had no comment. Right now, DHR is updating its child care management system and the daycare involved in this case is in the pilot area. That means the deficiency reports and probation status is not currently listed online. We are on your side asking more questions about this. A breaking update on the floor. One of the state's longest serving lawmakers is going to federal prison. Yeah, the judge sentencing the 83 year old John Rogers to more than a year in prison for stealing your tax dollars. Specifically, he pled guilty to conspiracy and obstruction of justice in a kickback scheme. Your WBRC investigator, John, Jen Horton, joining us in studio now. And Jen, this involved local tax dollars that were supposed to be going to improve our community. John Rogers stole $200,000 from a Jefferson County fund levy to help local students. Now he's on the hook to pay it all back. John Rogers walking into court a final time to learn whether he would serve a year or more in prison or on home confinement. His attorneys fought hard to keep him out, which didn't go far enough. Inside, Rogers tearfully apologized to his constituents. He would like to apologize to every, uh, every one of them personally if he could. Uh, he's sorry for his conduct uh, uh, in this uh, scheme. Uh, he is uh, embarrassed, humiliated, obviously. Here's what we know about the case. Rogers secured grant money for a local baseball league, asking them to kick half of that money back to him and his other co-defendant. Hence why they called it a kickback scheme. This went on for four years. Prosecutors say Rogers offered this same deal to three organizations. The government believes it would still be going on today. Up until we got involved, the conduct was continuing, so the answer to your question would be yes. As for other lawmakers who are considering similar tactics. You will get caught. You will go to jail. Uh, so just don't do it. After the hearing, Rogers didn't say much about what's ahead. Anything you want to say to your constituents today? Uh, I'm fine. It's, it's in God's hand. Rogers will report to prison in early September. We have comprehensive coverage of this case and Rogers co-defendants right now on our news app. Sarah. Jen, thank you. Well, breaking right now on the four, Israel says it launched a retaliatory strike in Beirut, Lebanon, targeting the Hezbollah commander responsible for a rocket attack that killed a dozen children in the Golan Heights. Lebanese state media reporting it was a drone firing three missiles and at least one person was killed. More sparks were flying this morning when the new head of the U.S. Secret Service testified in front of the Senate committee this time. Remember, the director of the Secret Service, Kim Cheeto, resigned related to the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump earlier this month. Acting Director Ronald Rowe says the agency is adjusting and improving, and as one of his first actions, he visited the site of the assassination attempt to figure out what could have been done better. Rowe told senators today he was ashamed of what he saw and says that gunman never should have been allowed on the roof. What I saw made me ashamed. As a career law enforcement officer and a 25 year veteran with the Secret Service, I cannot defend why that roof was not better secured. The former president will sit down with FBI agents Thursday for a victim interview, a routine part of criminal investigations. Time for weather every six minutes. Here's what I'm tracking and really here's what's next. Number one, we have that heat advisor. It's now been extended through your Wednesday night around 9 p.m. We're also looking ahead to lower rain chances, getting lots of breaks throughout your day today and really through this evening, but more dangerous heat in the days ahead. It's going to be very, very hot, and that's why we've declared first alert weather days, not just for your Wednesday, but also your Thursday now extending into your Friday. Here's a look at your evening hourly forecast. Still going to hold on to an isolated shower or or storm possibility rain chances at most this evening at around 30%, but that's going to lower off as we enter the later nighttime hours, just around 10 o'clock highs in the 90s through your early evening. But notice we're going to see temperatures cooling off in the upper 80s around 8 p.m. Expect a very warm evening, so giving you a first alert for very warm conditions. You don't need extra layers tonight, but tomorrow you may not need extra layers, but you are going to want extra water as we look at those heat index values for your Wednesday topping close to near 110 hottest 
hottest areas are going to be areas to the east or I'm mean, excuse me, our western counties over towards Lamar and even Pickens County getting close to 110 degrees for how it feels outside. We'll talk about if there's any heat relief in the forecast in the days ahead and weather every say. Well, it is drive time for a lot of folks. Let's get a check on our first alert traffic with Caroline Mitchell. How are the roads looking up there? Right now, roads are looking pretty good. So we're taking a look at the Birmingham Metro map right now, seeing some regular slowdowns on 280, 65 and 459, but no crashes to report. So that's always good news. Let's take a look at those average Alabama gas prices. Regular at 312, premium at 391 and diesel at 362. One cent up from yesterday. I'm Caroline Mitchell with your first alert traffic. New on the floor, a new hotel is coming to the city of Alabaster. Your Shelby County reporter, Anjanae Robinson, is live and on your side from Alabaster to explain what's happening with this project. Yeah, that's right, Sarah Morgan. Alabaster city leaders tell me that they're excited about this new Fairfoot Fairfield Inn and Town Place Suites Hotel. Now we're just behind the Promenade Shopping Center here in Alabaster. They say that this will make it easier for visitors to eat, shop, and stay here. Now city leaders say the hotel will have about 130 rooms that will take about a year to fully complete. Right now, crews are currently clearing the site to prepare for construction, and city, leader, city leaders are eager to get this hotel up and running as the city continues to grow and provide several retail and restaurant space in this area. Uh, the Holiday Inn Express, when it opened a few years ago, uh, help, helped out a lot. But uh, when we have big events like City Fest or uh, travel, travel ball tournaments, uh, things like that, or people just passing through town, uh, it's really going to help because uh, right now, you know, we have very limited hotel capacity in, in the city. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to expanding that. Now, city leaders tell me that the project is expected to com be complete in the fall of 2025. Live in Shelby County, Ajene Robinson, WBRC, Fox 6 News, on your side. Senator Katie Britt introducing a new law in honor of the Mountain Brook teenager attacked by a shark this summer. New on the four, how Lulu's law is aimed at protecting others at the beach. And get a look at this, a powerful storm tossing a trailer like a toy. Look at this. Details on the damage at Middle Tennessee State University 